Hello, my name is Nicole Mitchell. And, and I will be soon the director of jazz at the University of Pittsburgh. So who is Nicole Mitchell? I'm a creative flutist and I'm a composer, I'm an educator, I'm a poet, I'm a mother, I'm a wife, I'm a grandmother. Yes. <laughs> All of that's good. So, well, Kevin, do you have any questions? Yeah. Well, um, Nicole, you're—I'm—I'm I'm one of your secret admirers because I've been like following you for a while now. Okay. You know, and uh, playing some of your some of your things over like the YouTube and everything. So I've been like checking you out for a while. But I'm—I'm I'm wondering what actually drew you to uh, to the University of Pittsburgh to apply for the position. You know, when I came to interview for Pittsburgh, it was literally the first day I had ever been here, ever. Mm -hmm. And the position looked very unique. It looked special. And I was especially touched because Jerry Allen was someone that I really admired, someone that I had just gotten to know in the last five years. and got a chance to play with a few times and work with and she had been my hero from when I started like in my early 20s and to um, to uh, I don't know it was something I was invited to apply but it's an open call you know international call mm -hmm. and when I came here for the interviews and met everyone there was this special energy that I experienced you know, and I felt like her spirit had done something to this place, <laughs> something really amazing and special. And I was moved by that. And I felt compelled that I had something, you know, to offer, to contribute, to continue with what um, her and Nathan had put so much love and care into, you know, and I was compelled to you know, to, to offer myself, you know, as a possibility in continuing this amazing legacy. Yeah, so be, being in Chicago for all those years, just that rich jazz legacy there too. Yes. And, and here in Pittsburgh, but, you know, a while back, you know, back in the 40s and 50s and even in the 60s, a lot of those musicians were collaborating, going back and forth between those cities. Yes, you know, a lot of conversation yeah, musically. Yeah. 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 And I've been in California for the last eight years, mm -hmm. teaching at University of California, Irvine. And there's still a lot of Chicago in me. And, <laughs> and there was kind of a hunger to be immersed in a, com you know, in a community like Chicago where um, I could collaborate not just within the academic context, but also um, with people in the community and and I really missed that when I was in Irvine and so that was something there's like kind of a whole picture like a a sense of my whole spirit and my my whole being being able to be immersed and to focus on something positive and with the pot you know with the opportunity to give back and so that's what I was really excited about. I mean, there's so many amazing organizations here that have done really great work. And there's this excitement and enthusiasm to collaborate with the university through the jazz program. And it just feels like a certain kind of destiny that yeah. I'm very thrilled about. Yeah. I really appreciate all the work you do with AACM because um, I base a lot of my stuff that I do off of their philosophy, because I got into their philosophy a long time ago. I've spoken to like many musicians that were part of part of that. Mm -hmm. People from St. Louis and mm -hmm. people from Chicago and everything. You know that that whole concept of a great black music from the ancient to the future. Yes. So um, I know I, I do it on my program with the various forms of music that I try to expose people to, as well as the jazz and. Um, you know, another group I was part of was SoulPatrol.com. My friend uh, Bob Davis, who went, also went to pit with me here, um, started creating that group, and we were basic, basing a lot of our things on, on that concept, you know, trying to expose people to the music 
uh, further and deeper. So are you going to try to do that here at the University of Pittsburgh? Definitely. I mean, the core of the AACM concept, which AACM is Association for the Advancement of Creative Musicians, right. it's a musicians collective that was founded on the south side of Chicago by African American musicians that were looking for a new way to explore all of their potential and creativity as composers, as improvisers, and without any limitations. Mm. But that core philosophy is really make original music. Right. You know, to really find your voice as a musician. So aesthetically, the possibilities are endless. You know, we have this great legacy with jazz that covers so many different approaches and styles and it's and it's it's just like endless um, what we can do with the music and so I definitely want to continue that spirit of creativity mm -hmm. wherever I go and right. especially here and I feel there's kind of a hunger like there's a love for the tradition and there's also a hunger for exploration and for experimentation and so I want to jump right in the middle of that <laughs> So Nicole, it seems like now, you know, with the wave of musicians who came out that Dr. Davis was a part of, which was really the second wave of, of jazz creativity, and then Jerry Allen's tradition was, was again that echo, and I was talking about Bobby Watson and the others, right. people my age, you know, we were the young lions at one time, and now it seems like there's a new inflection point going on in creative music and in jazz and in culture, and where do you think that might or should or could go? I think what's really important is community. I think that this music is about community. It's about having something to bring people together. It's about offering alternative reality through, you know, inspiring different ways of looking and thinking about things. It's it's about intergenerational communication and mentorship and it's about opportunities for young people and so that's that's really what I'm feeling, that there's something special happening in Pittsburgh with all of this. And for the musicians, especially for the young musicians that are very committed and, and developing, for them to understand that this music isn't just about themselves as individuals. This music um, has an origin, it has a legacy, and it also has a future. You know what I mean? That they can be a part of co-creating as long as they like keep the values, you know, which going back to community, I think that's really a central value of what jazz should be about. And I feel that jazz has kind of lost that a little bit, like in kind of what we have, you know, in a lot of different strains across, across the world. Um, but also for us to connect in, in communicate and dialogue musically with musicians across the world because it is now global music. I have this saying that jazz is an African-American global freedom vehicle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and, and so how can we how can we manifest that to the fullest extent? Right. You know? Just to go on that a little bit further, there, there's, <laughs> if you look at the evangelization of non-jazz aware people, uh, there has become, I think, a belief that jazz is simply either technical proficiency or a playlist. Right, which and, and the leadership and collaborative nature of jazz and the flexible leadership nature of jazz makes it very different than, than what the outside world may think it is. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I don't think people really understand. Like when I teach a jazz history class and I have like 200 or 300 students who love hip hop, who love R&B, who love Neo Soul and, and all of the American popular music that they listen to, a lot of them are shocked to realize that jazz had a lot to do with that. Yeah, connecting the dots. You know, right. a lot of them don't realize the reason why they're sitting next to people from all over the world that are in their classroom with them, you know, and that there's this like multiculturalism that exists in this country, jazz had a lot to do with that, you know. so. That, those are things that we can't lose, we can't forget, and we have to stay true to for the music, you know? Any last thoughts? 
<laughs> um, I'm just extremely excited and elated and inspired by all of the amazing energy that's here in the city of Pittsburgh and that's like on the campus at University of Pittsburgh and also in the community and I you know even though I'm supposed to be starting in the fall I feel like this has been a beginning already and I'm already here my spirit is already here and I just can't wait to just move things forward and to and to collaborate and to meet more people and to make some music well, we're delighted to have you join the adventure. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Nicole, have you decided um, which courses you're going to be teaching yet? That? No, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't quite gotten to that mm -hmm. yet. Um, there's lots of courses. I've actually taught a few courses that have been cross-listed in Black Studies. Mm -hmm. um, one of them is called Sound of Resistance, okay. which has to do with Black music and how... Um, a lot of black musicians have created music that has a social message around the world. So mm -hmm. this is global yeah. in terms, not just African American music. I have another um, course called Hip Hop Philosophy, and then I, you know, I've done the Jazz History course, which is for non-majors, which I know that University of Pittsburgh also has a similar course. But I'm also interested in working closely with the graduate students and. Um, you know, looking at their curriculum and, and how I can contribute. You know, a lot of students have asked me about a creative music ensemble mm. that can have um, very diverse forms of music making and um, integrating like different styles from the legacy and trying new things. And so those are just a few things that I've done already. And then there's probably plenty more I'll come up with <laughs> before we get started. Well, I really appreciate you taking some time time out to talk to us all today, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, you, you being here. I, I was telling Sharon, I'm so excited, since because I've been checking out your music for a number of years Thank now. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Dr. J told me, he said, he said, you know, Chuck, I think they made the right choice. And I agree. Wow. I, yeah. Thank you so much for you. letting me know that. <laughs>